Guru Nation, welcome to episode 216 of Random Musings from the Clinical Trials Guru. This will also go on YouTube. I wanted to do a podcast today on, somebody asked me a good question in the, I can't remember where, it was either in the Site Owner Academy uh, or the CRA Academy, oh no, no, it came from that eight hour marathon telethon that we had recently we being myself and chris it was six and a half hours if you count an hour and a half of lunch uh of non-stop the line was open people would just come on on this webinar platform and would just ask questions they can call in they can log on with their computers and it was literally all day there was very little dead space during that telethon which was surprising which means that there's a great deal of hunger for information pertaining to most of it was pertaining to the business side of clinical research like people that are entrepreneurs that want to start CROs want to start sites want to are in are involved with the different industry vendors startups established sites and uh, even people looking to get into careers in research there was a few of those in there as well but one of the most memorable at least for me one of them and the one that inspired this call and this podcast was i can't remember his name but if you listen to the telethon it's on youtube it's also on the podcast um probably around the six hour mark or the four hour mark four and a half hour mark somewhere towards the end There was a a research site owner, very successful, been doing this for a decade, if not more, very knowledgeable, uh, asking me for my opinion on where I think the industry is headed. And if I had to uh, start over, what would I do? And the question really got me thinking, but we started getting into the idea of at least on a broad scale, how to be a generalist, how to be more of a generalist. So rather than just specializing, and this this advice applies to research sites, it applies to industry vendors, it applies obviously to job seekers, don't be a specialist, be a generalist. And if you can be a generalist and master new skills and just keep adding additional skills, to your repertoire, you will be well equipped for whatever changes the future brings. And in the Site Owner Academy today, we discussed this as well. And my strategy for this is and has been for the last probably five years, vertical integration. And what I mean by that is obviously started out as a site. My end goal is to own equity in dozens of various medical startup companies like biotechs, medical device companies, diagnostics are becoming huge. Um, And so it's actually starting early for us with um, an exosome startup that we're launching where we're actually going to have equity in this company. But that didn't just happen overnight. Like you can't that's the thing with vertical integration. You can, it's a great strategy, but you can't just start with vertically integrating. You can, you have to have something. So you have to start somewhere. Otherwise, you cannot. There is no vertical if you have nothing. So if I had to start over again, I probably would still start with the sites. I definitely would have done the uh, YouTube thing probably even earlier than I did, but I was pretty early to the game. I think YouTube came out in 2006 and I created my channel in 2010. Prior to YouTube, I was doing some blogging stuff. Uh, Google had their own platform called Blogspot, but it was never about research. It was more about business. I, I knew that I had, I knew that this internet thing was the way we all were going to be communicating with one another going forward in the future and it wasn't always that obvious like but I I had a feeling so if I had to start over I would still start at the site level 
I probably, here's one thing I would do differently now that I know. So I started at the site level. I owned the site. Um, actually started as a coordinator and then lucked into becoming an owner really quickly. And even back then, this is 2006, I actually started in 05, but I became a business owner in 2006. I was already thinking about vertical integration. I didn't know it was called that, but I was thinking about how do I turn my site into a CRO? And I talked to monitor every monitor that would come monitor my studies. I would ask, hey, because they all worked for CROs, what do you think about the CRO business? And most didn't know anything. They're just monitors. They're not in the business side of things. Uh, but I was, I was, I guess, turning over the proper stones, if you will. And um, fast forward to today, November 2018. Interestingly enough, I don't think the CRO business is a good business. I think the research site business is a far better business. The margins are higher. The stress is lower. The over, I mean, everything, the competition is less. Um, the demand is greater. I think that the site's are still where you should have your focus. If you're an entrepreneur in this space and you want to vertically integrate, the sites should be your foundation, okay? The next layer up, if you're gonna vertically integrate, and by the way, you can also horizontally integrate by merging different sites, which is kind of what we did also, and I probably would have done that sooner as well. Um, but, but let's get back to what I would have done differently. The one thing I would have done differently, when I started uh, as a site owner in 06, we were doing psychiatry studies. And I didn't diversify. I didn't do a non-psych study until 2009, 2010. So it was like three or four years of not diversifying. And I didn't truly diversify until very recently, meaning actually having separate PIs that are family practice physicians available in addition to my PIs that do psychiatry. Okay, because in the past, when I diversified, it was my psychiatrist would also do an asthma study. Um, that's not true diversification because you can't get the patients as easily. So true diversification is actually horizontal integration, bringing on other, other doctors, other sites. I didn't bring on other sites, but I brought on different doctors. And so horizontally integrated, diversified the study offerings I was able to do. I would have done that much quicker. It wasn't until recently that we started doing that. So now we actually are truly diversified. And this is actually probably the second year where we are truly diversified at two of my main sites where we have psychiatrists, which is always gonna be our bread and butter. That's where we started, it's our core competency. But also family medicine doctors, general practitioners, which is what I recommend everyone who's starting out. I actually recommend you start out with the general medicine studies. It's much easier to get the ball rolling with general medicine studies. I started out as a specialist. Now, the advantage I had was I already had studies in the pipeline, so I didn't have to do very much biz dev early on. It was more a matter of learning the operations. If you're a true startup, starting from zero, you want to bring on a family medicine doctor because the those are the best ones uh, for the widest variety of studies that you could bring to your company. And then you wanna specialize up, which is still diversification, which is still becoming more of a generalist, which is still horizontal integration. So that's the only thing I would have done differently. In 06, I would have immediately, I would have done my psych stuff because I still didn't know that well. I was still learning that. But I would have quickly diversified into other areas of research. And I probably would have gotten into vaccines. Um, 
I would have liked to have gotten into phase one, but the, I know that's that's a tough one to get into, even if it's something that you know you want to set your targets on, because you're you're the the competition is not just in your local region; it's nationwide for phase one healthy volunteer studies. But I would have diversified much quicker, and I w- I would have been able to sustain the cyclical variabilities of the CNS, which is the central nervous system disorder studies, because it's CNS truly is feast or famine. Right now we're feasting 2018. We're feasting 2019. We're feasting 2020, probably the same after that. I don't know if history is a good indicator of what the future holds for CNS. It's going to be cyclical. There's going to be boom and bust in CNS general medicine. There's less of a boom and bust. Right, because a general medicine is just by the definition, there's more, there's a wider variety of studies you can bring on. So, I would have done that much quicker, um, much sooner. Um, but vertical integration, let's get back to that. So, I still think the sites are the foundation for you. And this, by the way, if you are a um, if you're a job seeker, I think the same strategy applies to you. The site, the site is the foundation. You're going to learn the most. It's probably the easiest to get in. You're probably going to have the most responsibilities than anywhere else because most of these sites are not streamlined in their efficiencies. It's just a coordinator, two coordinators, and some of the sites get streamlined. But ideally, when you're starting out as a job seeker, you you want as many responsibilities as possible because you're becoming a generalist from the beginning. So... Whatever I'm about to say for the business owners or the soon-to-be business owners also applies to the job seekers. So the sites are the foundation, right? They're the most profitable. If run properly, you can have 90% profit margins. Usually, you should have no less than 50% profit margins at a research site every year. Like, that's your profit. The next layer above that foundation if you're gonna vertically integrate now. So the first thing you should do, horizontally integrate, meaning get sites that can do all kinds of studies. The goal should be, and I don't know anyone who's here yet, nobody, no matter how successful they are, the goal should be the ability to do every study that is out there. So you never wanna say no to a study, that's the goal because you have the patients, you have the capabilities, you have the staff, you have the doctors, you have the equipment, all that stuff. That should be the goal. If you can say yes to every study, you're golden, all right? So start with the sites as a foundation, horizontally integrate, get diverse, and then build on top of that with uh, vertical integration. Now again, this is my strategy probably others too but I'll, I'm the one that's articulating it now I have actually I haven't heard this from others um, but I know others are thinking the same that I know others are actually doing the same thing too um, but there's probably other ways to defend yourself from market fluctuations and innovations and technological disruptions that are going to be happening uh, with sightless trials and virtual trials and all this stuff, which may or may not ever actually become a mainstream. But this is what inspired this podcast, this successful clinic owner who called in and was worried about virtual trials and how to position his already successful network of sites, how to position them properly for the future in a world where there is not just risk-based monitoring, but virtual trials or hybrid virtual trials, what can you do? And you've got other people like Dr. Kingsley, who, and he's very successful as well, who is horizontally integrating, and he's he's sort of creating a network of sites that are the cream of the crop, like the best metrics that they could possibly have when it comes to quality of data. And so it makes sense that he's all for and all in favor of pay for performance so not every right now we're paid on fair market value not pay for performance so he's a big advocate for that which i don't disagree with but my strategy doesn't take my strategy doesn't require that to be the industry norm mine is 
you can have mediocre sites and still be still be protected from these disruptions all right i think i could be very wrong the horizontal integration sites as the foundation build up on top of that the cro the cro is not a good business maybe it used to be but ever since i've been doing cro stuff since 2017 it took me it took me 10 years to get 11 years to actually say that, okay, now I'm ready to actually do some CRO work because I have the foundation of the sites, even though we weren't fully diversified yet, but we still have the foundation there. Um, and that's still a work in progress, but we're also vert vertically integrating now with the CRO. And interestingly enough, all of our CRO projects so far have been on ecology studies, which I have had zero experience with as a site. Zero. But again, it's more of just becoming a generalist. That's why I took on a oncology CRA part-time position. Um, I have one site I monitor every eight weeks for oncology. That's it. Right? And that's to build my own skill set and learn oncology so that I can... I can follow my own formula, my own blueprint for success in this industry in the next several decades, right? CRO business, not a good business. Take it from me, take it from many others who do this. It's not, the margins are not that great, okay? There's a lot of competition with Ikevia, with Parks, with all the big ones, right? Those big ones have probably 90% of the market share. Everyone else, and it's extremely fragmented, but the other 10%, it might even be the other 5%, fight over crumbs. And those crumbs, the way, the only way you can fight and win is to outbid everybody else. And by that, it means lower your costs. Like, how cheap can you do this? Because if they can afford someone like Quintiles, or someone like PPD, they're just going to go with them, not with you. So your core competency at that point is how cheap, how low can you go? Thankfully, my CRO can go painfully low. And so we've, but I don't want, it, it's so low that I don't want to take on more projects. I just want enough to have that second layer on my vertical integration to get to my next layer, which is pharma, right? Pharma stuff. And you can also, here there's different layers uh, of horizontal integration at the CRO level. So CROs use vendors. There's on average 10 vendors per study. So if you can somehow get involved with eSource, which is going to be big, or eReg, which is going to be huge going forward. Um, if you can get into patient recruitment, which is never going away. If you can get into digital advertising, running Facebook ads, which is still patient recruitment. If you can get into um, operations, right? Biostatistics, uh, risk-based monitoring, patient reported outcomes, all those things. All There's vendors for all this stuff. Another vendor that's going to be huge is virtual trial vendor. So can you get involved in all these things? Yes, much more likely to do so through your CRO. You're not going to get involved in all those things as a site. As a site, you need patient recruitment, you need um, physicians, but you're not interacting with these vendors. You're not actually choosing vendors to work with until recently. Now eSource and eReg is being sold directly to the sites. But prior to that, the people that were managing all these vendors were the CROs. And that's still the case. So if you can get to that level, and by the way, just because you're now, and I'm now talking about the CRO, doesn't mean that the site stuff goes away. That's the foundation. That's why it's the foundation. It's still there. It's probably the last one to go anywhere. It's, it's profitable. It should be running on its own. Mine still don't. I still have to be involved um, almost on a daily basis. I have people running it, but I'm still playing a huge role in those sites. But it's the foundation, right? The CRO, I'm building that. The sites are still working. Now I'm building the CRO. Now you're getting into these different vendor relationships. Now you can work some kind of deals with them. Partnerships, equity, different things, all these vendors I mentioned. And at least for me, the plan has always been 
to get equity and to offer all these services. See, once you start building this vertically integrated machine, right? And with me, it's I even have clients that we're helping get studies for. So I've ha I have an informal site network or at least the site alliance. I have a CRA academy where I'm actually training coordinators and future CRAs. Um, that's a separate, that's like a separate vendor that I have. So all this is part of the machine that I can then show a sponsor and say, hey, look at what I've built over the last 13 years. This is the infrastructure, it's still growing. I'm still active in all these things. I can do your study. I can help you take your study through the clinical research from phase one to four or phase one to three. Um, we have enough people in our infrastructure to be able to do everything for you full service. We can do it at cost because I own all these things, right? Or I at least have influence with clients, with CRA Academy students, graduates. So we can do these things for much less than the competition, right? And in exchange, I want equity. And that's not gonna work with Pfizer or Janssen or Boehringer. It's gonna work with companies you've never heard of. And that's what I'm doing now. We have one deal, uh, one equity deal done, finalized. Um, we're probably gonna do one, if we're lucky, every two years for the time being, right? And at some point, once this machine is finely tuned and humming along and we're just adding different layers to every single piece of this vertically integrated and horizontally integrated machine, we can start doing more. It becomes more scalable. Right now, it's not scalable. My, my equity thing is not scalable, all right? My sites, are almost scalable. My consulting work is almost scalable. Uh, my CRA Academy is scalable. The CRO is not scalable yet. And neither is the equity deals in, in these biotechs and diagnostic companies and um, and uh, what they call biologics, right? Which is the next thing like exosomes and stem cells. So once that becomes scalable, then we can start doing 10 deals a year, right? And that's like really long, long way down the road and for me that's my roadmap for how to prepare myself from disruptions from changes in the industry how to constantly evolve so that i'm protected from whatever external forces are out there and you're never truly protected i mean we can have another great depression and all these businesses that i've just built lose 90 percent of their revenues well then you got to go back and rebuild and see what opportunities are there. There's always going to be opportunities, right? So that's my goal. That's my roadmap. Um, doesn't mean you have to do the same exact thing. Obviously, YouTube and these podcasts and social media and all this stuff are still going to be, to me, it's integral to what I'm doing because it brings me awareness. Like it brings me more deal flow. The exosome deal I got was because of YouTube. Um, the vendor relationships I get are because of the podcast or because of social media, the clients, the CRA Academy students. It all feeds into itself. It's all a giant machine. And that doesn't mean it's a roadmap for you, but you can at least see where I'm going and plan your roadmap, all right? What is your plan? And you just want to get vertically integrated? Do you... Uh, horizontally integrated, vertically integrated? Do you want to completely pivot from a site into a CRO? I don't recommend it. Or from a site to a vendor, which I know many people have done successfully. There's no rules to this. It's whatever you want to do, whatever you want to accomplish. How big are your ambitions? How much time do you have? How much sacrifice are you willing to make? All these things factor in, right? But that's mine. And thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. And let me know what yours is. How are you going to protect yourself um, from technological innovations that are going to be disruptive and just from the macro economics of the clinical research industry as a whole? Like, what are you doing to prepare yourself for virtual trials, sightless trials, um, 
think about these things. You sh everyone should be thinking about these things. So let me know in the comments or just email me or text me 949-415-6256 or dan at theclinicaltrialsguru.com. Thank you very much. Have a great rest of the day.